Alright, hello fellow YouTubers, this is Dark Poet again. Today I have a tutorial video. I'm going to try to explain this piece of software as completely and definitively as possible. Though I will say this much about the software, it's pretty easy to pick up on. So it's not like you've got to scour the internet to figure out how do I do this, how do I do that. Alright, so what we're going to do is I'm going to open up my software. I've actually been using this uh, probably since 2013, I think. Yeah, I think 2013. Um, but there are three aspects to this one piece of software, which is very advantageous. One, you have an audio CD ripper. So what I'm going to do is explain the audio CD ripper because I don't even think I have any physical CDs anymore to actually show you how it works. Um, I would really have to go digging. I could have sworn I had one though. And I ripped, well, no, actually it was a virtual disc. It was an M3U because it was all in a FLAC file and I had to actually open it up in a virtual drive using Daemon Tools and then access that drive from here, and then I was able to rip it into MP3s. But basically, you put an audio disc in your CD-ROM drive or your DVD drive. Me, I have a DVD uh, writer, so it helps with this part here, the disc burner. But when you put an audio CD in, I don't remember if it automatically detects it and opens it. It won't open it up automatically. you got to select the drive. It'll show up in there, and then the tracks. and It'll show up the number of tracks, and it may have nothing else, just the track numbers. But you've got metadata, which you can click on, and there's a, a down button there. It'll give you options. You just click on it, and it'll give you the option to download. You click on that. And it will go online, and it will retrieve the artist information, the album information, the track numbers, and the track titles for each song as well. Then you can click this box here, which when you have a CD in the drive, when you click this box, it'll click every box below it for every song there. And then you can click over here to rip CD, and it'll go exactly where you tell it to, which is down here. The output folder I have set up is called Album Rips. And this is how, how I have my file names set up. So the actual file name is going to be album artist, album number, and title. So it's, it's really good, but it will only rip one track at a time. And even gives it a CRC number, which I really don't understand all that, but it's totally irrelevant. All you want to do is take your music from a compact disc and bring it into the digital world and make it an mp3 or anything you can choose mp3 you can come in here you can go you can make an AAC out of it you can make a FLAC or an M4A any audio that your heart desires true audio wave Windows Media Audio but obviously you're probably going to select whatever works with say your iPod or with your phone or whatever app on that phone that you are using to listen to your music with. With me, I know FLAC is really awesome sounding, but unfortunately, it kind of defeats the purpose because all my music used to be in WAV files. And WAV files were really large, so I moved to MP3, which is smaller. FLAC is basically, to me, as far as size goes, is a, just a, another WAV file. Yes, it does keep the music clarity. An unbelievable clarity to music with the FLAC file. It's just too large and takes up a lot of space on my external hard drive. So even to this day, I've stuck with MP3. Now, you get into the disc burner side of this. I do have blank discs, but I'm not going to waste one just to show and tell. But you can pick whatever artist you want, say Anvil, Monument of Metal, since it's already set up. You just drag it, drop it into this window. 
and you can highlight everything and you know you can probably do all kinds of stuff at this point you can make an audio CD you can make an mp3 disc or you can make a data disc with these audio files okay now your options here you can write CD text you can create gaps between the songs of say one second or two seconds at most you can do a three second gap between songs you can also normalize the volume you can also increase or decrease the decibels which by default this was at 95 um, which is really good you can also do this when you're converting so once you've got it set up to the way you want it and you've got your disc in you just hit burn CD and it will begin the burning process um, the one I use the most though is the audio converter itself which my output folder set for album reworks I've set for constant bitrate at the highest you can go which is 320 you have an advanced tab where you can select channels the quality I've got it set for highest and low pass automatic high pass is automatic you set it for original <clears throat> there's nothing here that I need to change the only thing I changed was highest I think when I first installed it it was at normal quality but I wanted it at the highest quality possible so that's the only thing I've done in the advanced tab uh, you can also change different you can use a variable bit rate or the ABR which I am not familiar with ABR I'm only familiar with VBR and CBR which I stick with the constant bit rate at 320 and that's my rename file structure right there now I'm going to show you what I do with this because this was done up for iTunes because <laughs> it does well with two discs and you know you can have the different artwork and, but my phone doesn't like that or rather the software I use does not like two discs it will actually separate them and label them as two separate albums just because it says CD1 and CD2 it won't keep them together like I was hoping it would so I end up doing this I take my disc one drop it down in there open up disc two drop it down in there and this is this is both both CDs and you can see track one through sixteen and then here is 1 through 14 then I just click on one of those hold my shift key and hit my down arrow and I've got all the tracks set up now if you'll notice this is grayed out where the year and the genre are solid black text and the track artist is this is because these don't match same with the song title and the track number but these are going to be grayed out because they're not going to be the same but this one I can fix because it says disc one here and then disc two. So I just go in here, get rid of that part, and now it's solid black across all the tracks. As you can see, the album artist here is missing. So I'll go to Foreigner here. I'll go ahead and copy that and paste it over to album artist. And boom, there you go. Album artist will appear on all the tracks. The next step I do in this particular case, okay, this is the first song on the second disc. It won't be for much longer. We're going to renumber that one. 17, and you just hit enter, and it'll automatically take you to the next one. And you go 18, and you just keep on going until they've all been changed. So there you go, 30 tracks. And as you can still see in the the actual file name, it says 01 Urgent. But once it converts, the software will edit the original file names to reflect all the changes I've made. And then I also look through here to make sure there's nothing that isn't capitalized. I like everything in the song title to be capitalized. So once again, click on the first track, hold my shift button, hit that down arrow and then just right click and hit title case just to make sure if anything wasn't capitalized it is now
Now, this album covers 300 by 300. Uh, I don't like that. Now, you've got two ways. I just cleared it. But you've got two ways to do this. I'm also going to get rid of that genre. Now, remember, as long as you have everything here highlighted, everything you do is going to affect every single track. And that's what we want for this. You've got two options. You can load some album art, which in this particular case, I would have to go into here back into music, back into the Foreigner discography, compilations, definitive collection, covers, uh, duh, 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 and there's the front, and you can click open, and it'll put it there. And notice it's really large. I can resize that. Boop, to 500 by 500. Done. Now you see it's 500 by 500. If you don't have the album art to load, see if it's clear like that, you can also hit download. And these are the sources you get to use to find your album art. Discogs is the latest edition. I think just a couple of updates ago, they added in Discogs. I usually start with GD3. Now, you can, if, if you don't get the album art you're looking for for this particular album, you can always edit the title. Maybe there's something in the title that shouldn't be there. So this is the Platinum Collection. This is not it. This is the one we're looking for. And it says Disc 2. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. I usually try and judge by the one that looks the clearest. So I'll probably take that one. And then resize it from 1,000 by 1,000 to 500 by 500. Because for me, 500 by 500 is really good for MP3 players. It's not too huge. Your screen, it's not trying to downsize to fit it in your screen. Um, but your resize, you have four options. And those are your options. I won't use 300 by 3. I, this is my average. This is the one I use all the time. So that's the good one. And then just come out of that and leave it there. You're good to go. Also, you can do lyrics, which Foreigner shows up on a website. Which, oh, here we go. And this is usually how I go after them. I'll just sit here and type Foreigner lyrics and then hit enter and this is what I'm looking for the azlyrics.com and I'll just click on that and every album they ever had shows up which there's not a whole lot of them but in the case of one of these you're going to be hopping back and forth like feels like the first time which came off the first album Boop. go in here I would climb any mountain we got to deal with the ads unfortunately but you copy and come back in here, you click on the lyrics window, and it opens this box up. And then you put right click and paste, and then say, okay. And notice you can see your lyrics right there, and there's now a little green check in the bottom right. To let you know, yep, the lyrics are there. You can also close up these little boxes if that's a little too much space for you. But having this on a much larger screen at 1920 by 1080, I get to see everything on the screen. You can also apply for each individual track uh, down here in options. Resize embedded art. But there should be two options available. It's only showing this one. Where's the other one? Uh, DSP. This is where you can affect the audio right here for each track. When you convert it, you can make it louder. You can make it softer. Would you apply, you click that button to apply replay gain, and you can jack that bad boy up to maximum. You can do a fade in, you can do a fade out, you can delete digital silence, you can add silence. It's, there's a lot of things, but default is always 95. If I can get it back on 95, okay. No! <laughs> That's the default setting. <clears throat> so sometimes you might get some audio, and it's extremely loud, and you can reduce it through the uh, volume normalization settings here, which I normally don't use it. I have been on one album by Nine Inch Nails, his very first album. Um, he re-released it years later after he finally bought all his masters back. But it's kind of quiet. So 
without that album I'd used replay gain to bring the volume up but yeah this is these are all the things you can do uh, and I, I just ended up going back and forth and just bouncing and so you go back and look long long way from home okay mm -hmm, that's right there and also you might want to notice one thing on this on this website as well copy come back in click on that open box paste okay boom and what happens is your iPod or your phone will display the lyrics as well as the album art which is set up it'll display all this information here you won't see the comments though I can put whatever comment I want down there unless I don't know unless you have this software or something else you're not going to be able to see the comments from your mp3 player which kind of sort of sucks <clears throat> like with the Beatles I've been redoing their stuff and when I was going through the lyrics down at the bottom in this area here there were liner notes about the songs that the Beatles wrote uh, one song the original lyrics that were handwritten by John Lennon sold for close to five hundred thousand dollars you know, and these were little interesting little tidbits of information so I wound up putting them in the lyrics section at the end because I just you know that was I like that information that's cool you don't have to do that I just like to have the lyrics though so when I'm listening I can just tap my screen and boop the lyrics pop up um, iPods should do that as well by default at least mine did you just click on the click on the screen it should display the lyrics with my phone using jet audio I have to click on the album art section of the screen and then it'll display the lyrics over that and it doesn't matter how this looks because if you look at it like this it resets it within my phone all of this is centered every single bit boom, boom, it's centered all the way down so it doesn't matter if it's all like this or not it's gonna it's going to put it right in the middle of the screen and it's going to have every line centered. And it's, it looks pretty good. And sometimes on A to Z lyrics, I guess somebody's so in, in, in such a haste to get the lyrics up that they might misspell things or get the wrong lyrics entirely. But I just go ahead and grab what I can and I can always edit it later if I should be listening and just want to read along with the lyrics and see that oh that's wrong but yeah I'll do this with each and every one of these normally when I do a live album I don't put the lyrics in because live albums they tend to ad lib or change lyrics as they want to because well it's a live show and that's how live shows go but yeah this software I used to have to do all of this individually back in the late 90s early 2000s I would have to go in here and I will show you a real good example um, albums to be redone six feet under a decade in the grave so, there, look at that that's what I had to deal with back in the 90s and early 2000s before I discovered this software five years ago um, I would have to manually read label each one of these tracks click on it right click rename and boom so I would put here who the artist was say well let me show you so like this is uh I don't even have the, the song title I have to go to detailed view to get at least that part so I would put six feet under space hyphen space Feasting on the Blood, whatever the song title was, space, and then track number one, space, hyphen, and then the song title. So it would be, yeah, that's how I would have to do it. So I would just go ahead and hit that rename and put my album artist first, and then the album title, and then the track number, and then the song title. And then at some point, you know, I would come in here and take okay let's copy the album artist and album title and use that so I'd finish out that one then I would start this one go rename 
I would hit rename and then I would just come up here into the box and click paste and that would put my album artist and album title in but then of course I have to number it to and then whatever the song title was but I tried to take shortcuts but sadly doing it this way you don't get much else you don't get the lyrics you can't put the art in there at all not that not this way not doing it manually so yeah and also with this here like this once it's converted it's going to do it just the way I wanted it to. It's going to have the album artist, then the album, then the number, and then the title. Because it will rename the file. That's what I want it to do. If you do that, well then, well you've unchecked it, it won't rename it. It'll stay looking like that, which I don't like that. So, yeah. Rename the files, and this is the format that I'm using. So everything I've done changed. It'll give you the album artist, then the album and then the track number, and then the song title. So it does everything I used to do manually, all in one big fell swoop. So you don't probably don't have to do it like I'm doing this, but it's a habit. I do this when I hit convert. I'm going to go ahead and do this for now because I can just delete it, but boom. Now it's going to go through, and as you can see, there's the names of the file. That's what it's renamed. This is the actual file name it's being renamed to. But you won't see the lyrics or the album art until you've got it loaded up into your iPod or on your Android phone. But I'm using six converters right now. When I initially installed the software program on my new PC here, it was set up with eight converters because I have a quad-core CPU and you notice it's only using up maybe half of my CPU but as it knocks out the songs this percentage drops it'll fluctuate constantly while it's converting audio but as you scroll back you can see the percentages of completion and it'll tell you done give you your little green check mark but this is probably the best software I've discovered for editing your mp3s I mean this is boom and for me to have an, uh, an albums and in parentheses final edit for me it's got to include the album artist album title the year the track artist the song titles and the track numbers and it needs the album art and it needs lyrics to be considered a final edit so I've been going back through all my music, and including some of the new music I got. Excuse me. I don't know where these hiccups are coming from. But I've been redoing everything to make sure all the information I want is complete and it's there. So it's something for me to do during the day, and I can kill time. I started doing this stuff one day at 9.30 in the morning, and the next thing I know, it's 5 p.m. And I'm like, woohoo! But I'm never bored. Because I'm looking up information, I'm looking up lyrics, I'm trying to find album art. You know, if you can't find the album art through the downloads section for this, you can always go to the Wikipedia and look up that particular artist. And usually when you find their album and you click on it and it takes you to that page for the album, they'll have the album art, which you can download and save in your downloads folder. And you can use that and just load it up in there. I mean, this is the greatest thing since peanut butter and jelly for me. And, I mean, I, I realize it's not food and it's not going to fill your tummy. But if you're an audiophile like I am, this is a must-have piece of software. It does everything for you. I mean, you have complete control. You can edit everything about the audiophile. With the things I've, I've just shown you, renumbering them all simply because my Jet Audio does not like two disc CD sets <laughs> so I just make it one disc okay so now it's 30 tracks instead of you know 16 on this one and 14 on that one boom done they're all you know 1 through 30 and as you can see it's already renamed re renamed them see we broke off it stopped at 16 urgent was track number one for the second disc but now it's track 17 and so on and so forth it's really a good thing to have. 
but I will leave the description or a link for this piece of software down in the description. Um, they are very, um, very good about updates. I mean, the updates come pretty frequent. I mean, the last three have been like, I think, one, one a week for the last three weeks, there's been an update for this piece of software. And I think I started this, using this software when it was back in like, uh, version six. So since then, it's already up to 8.0.6. They've done a lot. And they've added some GUI changes. Um, this is different because they didn't have it set up like this before, but I like that. It's just another a thing. Just another thing. And as you saw over here, this is how the actual file names looked before I converted. I mean, it was already in MP3. I'm just adding album art and adding lyrics and making sure everything works for me, like renumbering disc 2 so it's just a collection of 30 songs on one disc, but I'm, they're not all going to fit on one disc, <laughs> but they'll fit just fine on my MP3 player. And there's the audio telling you that it's completed, it's converting. It'll also show you here if there's any errors or if it skipped anything, and it'll also say how many threads. Average CPU usage was 43% on that one. Then I close, and then I take this down. And then we go to Music, Album Reworks, and there's that entire album. All done up and renumbered 1 through 30. No longer is this a two-disc set. Nowhere on here does it say it's a two-disc set because I've eliminated it. It's just now known as the Definitive Collection. And that's how I like it. But I'm not going to keep all of this because I didn't put all the lyrics. I only did like what? The first three or four, four tracks with lyrics? But then usually I'll end up cutting and pasting into the folder that's going to eventually go into. But yeah, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. That's my favorite piece of software for editing MP3 files. And like I said, I will leave a link in the description below. If you enjoy my content, please hit that subscribe button and also hit the notification bell so that you get notified when I upload new videos. Thank you for watching, and until the next video, peace! Well, here I am. I forgot to mention one thing about that a to Z lyrics.com website. You know, besides the liner notes, I got off in my own little thing there. <laughs> um, let's go back to Foreigner. I'm not going to type it all out because there it is at azlyrics.com. Now, if you look at this, you can see where I've been. Like, I've grabbed three lyrics here. Feels like the first time, cold as ice, and long, long way from home. So what happens is, and this is handy so that you don't lose your place if you're actually going to purchase the software and add lyrics to your MP3s. If I go to Star Writer, it'll automatically open up into a new tab. Then you can copy the lyrics and then close that window. But when you come back to the main page, Star Writer is now a dark purple. Because you've already been there, so you don't get lost. So if you come back and you're like, what song was I on? <laughs> You can see where you've been because they're now dark purple. Well, the ones I haven't looked at yet are still a blue color. That's what I was going to say about the website that I forgot to mention because I got off into the whole um, liner notes section down here. Which I can also show you that. Not every single one of these will have that. The Beatles lyrics. See, like, you can see these are all purple because I've been through every I've, every single song. Even the, um, all the way at the bottom. Well, there's some of these. I, I've got the Past Masters Volume 1 and Volume 2. Don't know if I had the live at the BBC or not. But I've hit some of those songs for other albums. 
I've got Anthology 1 where you can see there's purple because they're connected. You know, they're in previous albums, so they get highlighted. And a lot of these from Anthology 2 I've hit. But they have a section, other songs, Can You Take Me Back? Which I don't think, obviously, that song I don't have in my collection yet because I'm still not done. I have only done their actual albums. I haven't done the compilations or the anthologies. But if you come up here and say, for example, let's look at their first album. Oh, no, not the first album. Help. If you open up, there's your lyrics, and it'll tell you Help version. I, I'm assuming that means that's it's from the actual album, not the movie. But if you scroll down, here's the liner notes I was talking about. And I added these to my lyrics section. And basically it says, The lyrics of this song represent John Lennon's stress because of the quick rise to fame. In 1980, he told Playboy, I was fat and depressed and I was crying out for help. So just, just about every song in here, there is a liner note. The Beatles performed the night before only once outside of a studio for their final BBC radio session. The Beatles invite you to take a ticket to ride on the 26th of May, 1965. So, yeah, I think it's interesting. There's other groups that they have liner notes for each song, but I just wanted to point out, you know, the basic, you know, if you come through here and you're getting lyrics, that it, it, it doing that, it helps you to keep from losing your place. If you're going for the first Foreigner album, and as you go through the lyrics, they'll turn purple, and you won't lose your place, because you know, okay, this one's purple, that's where I left off last. So you can head to your next track and get the lyrics. But yeah, that's that's what I forgot to mention in my eagerness to speak about that software. So once again, peace until the next video. With the